technical. We continue today with Devarim Parakhet, Deuteronomy chapter 8, continuing with this long speech that Moshe has been given for a while, all about, uh, you know, all about B'nai Yisrael's need to continue to listen to the mitzvot as they go into the land of uh, Israel. Kol ha-mitzvah, all of the mitzvah, Moshe says, all of the commandments, asher anochi mitzavcha hayom tishmerun la'asot, you should continue to observe leman tichyun, so that you live. This has been one of the themes here. One of the themes has been that doing the mitzvot is going to help you live a better life. It's going to help you stay within the land of Israel. Uvate urvitem, and then you will have you will you will increase in size. Uvatem virishtem etaretz asher nishpad unai lavotechem, and then you will go and you will inherit the land which God has given to you. Vizacharta, and you should remember at kol haderech asher holicha. Aha, Adonai Elohim, this journey that God took us over the course of the last 40 years in the desert. What's the purpose of this 40 year journey in the desert? So, here, what is being said by Moshe is that it was all a big test by God. A nisayon, we know in the past there have been tests for B'nai Yisrael, right, or tests for the patriarchs. We, it's also identified back in the book of uh, Shemot that mana was a test. Not exactly sure what the test is. There's a debate amongst the commentaries of those who say to make see if B'nai Yisrael had faith in God and therefore they didn't take the mana on um on uh, a Friday, they would take the double portion and save one for Shabbat, as God instructed them to do. Others, whether or not they would complain about other food or not. But we see here is there's this idea that being close to God and being in the desert and being in a place where you have to depend upon God is a challenge and a test to B'nai Israel. I don't know that we have those exact same tests anymore today, but it's interesting to think about within this context, the idea of a Sukkot, right, where we leave our houses and we go out today there you can buy a sukkah for uh, many many thousands of dollars or you can go stay in some super fancy hotel but the idea that's supposed to be inculcated is this idea of being uh, of being under the sale of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, being under the, the shadow of God and sort of this dependency uh, uh, upon God that we are on the outsides and anything can happen and that's part of what's being told to us is the challenge the test whether or not we would keep the commandments in the desert and what is that? And how is, is that a prelude to um, keeping the commandments then in Israel? And what is B'nai Israel's response? Verse three: Vaya ancha, vaya rivecha. Or I should say, God subjected you to hardship and hunger. Vaya chilcha, taman asher lo and then God gave you manati. I wonder if that sort of, you know, Moshe can read it in different ways. You can read it as Moshe saying that God really made you suffer with hardship, or Moshe is almost saying it sarcastically. God made you suffer? How'd you suffer? You had man falling from the falling from the heavens. Leman and what's the ultimate lesson? Sort of like we were saying just a moment ago in regards to the holiday of Sukkot, that man does not live on bread alone, but man lives according to God's decree. So God can place you in the place where everything is perfect and everything is wonderful and everybody has enough and God can decide, I'm not giving that person anything. Or... God can place you in a place like the desert, the wilderness, where there's no food. How are we going to eat? How are we going to feed? How are we going to protect ourselves? And God can provide you with everything that's necessary to make your life a pleasure there. And so that's one of the lessons here. Will B'nai Israel go and will they follow God's path? And more so, the a, a lesson that's coming out of these 40 years in the desert. Do B'nai Israel pass the, the test or not? So it seems in many ways, according to many commentaries, that they don't. But then we have statements in in. Books like uh, like uh, Yirmiyahu, who he says, it talks about how God remembers the 40 years how Bnei Israel traveled, followed God into the, into the desert, Eretz Lo Zerah, that there was a great sense of, of, uh, of faith that Bnei Israel exhibited. Continuing in verse 4, Simla Tchalo Valtame Alecha Vraglacha Lobatse Kazarbon Shana, the clothes upon you, you did not wear out, nor did your feet swell these 40 years. How lucky they were. I guess they didn't have to do too much laundry. Sounds good to me, right? Their clothes didn't wear out, their feet didn't swell. Bear in mind that God 
that uh, he disciplines you just as a householder, just as a parent disciplines his child. So he offered discipline to you because he's your parent. And that's what parents sometimes do to their children. They offer discipline to, to their children. And God therefore disciplines you. mitzvot Adonai Elohecha. And you should keep God's commandments. Lalechad bidrachav ulira oto to walk in God's ways and show reverence. And this verse, this idea of lalechet bidrachav, to follow God's path, is one that is, uh, is again, one of the, the things that's mentioned numerous times within the, the book of Dvarim. And, uh, you know, the, the Talmud, I don't think it's quoting this verse, but one of the places where it talks about the, to follow God's path, talks about how can you follow God's path? And we were just told in the previous chapters that God is an eshochla, that God is an all-consuming fire. So how could we possibly follow God's path? And the answer that the Gemara and Masechet Sota says is that we have to follow the midot of God, not the midot of, of vengeance and anger that are sometimes presented in these chapters when Bnei Israel will not, if Bnei Israel do not follow the commandments the, of the Brit, but rather mahu rachu, mafata rachu, mahu chanu, nafata chanu, in the same way God is merciful and God is, is uh, forgiving, that those are the midot that we have to follow, certainly appropriate as we head into the uh, seasons, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the days of of awe, where we're asking for forgiveness, and one of the best way to get forgiveness is by granting forgiveness. And uh, so the, the, uh, that's uh, just a little idea about this. Continuing in verse 7. Ki Adonai Elohecha meviachal Eretz Tova. Eretz nachle maim ayonotu tumot yotzim babika uvahar. God is bringing you to a good land, a land with streams and springs and fountains issuing from plains and hill. Eretz chitau sora v'gefen v'teinav rimon Eretz zeit shemen udvash. A land flowing with wheat and barley, with vine, with figs, pomegranates, olive trees and honey. Right, we have there the seven species uh, repeated later again, but the seven species that the land of Israel is blessed. We say uh, special brachot on. So right, God is going to bring us to a wonderful place and is going to bless us. And so we shouldn't take that for granted. And we should know that again, that it's, this is all coming for, from, from God and the land we're going to may not have the Nile River, but it still has incredible ways to, uh, to, to grow crops, to grow food, and we should appreciate that. Continuing in Pasuk Ted, verse 9, Eretz Asher lo b'miskenut tocha ba'lechem, a land in which you may eat food without stint, without worries. Lo tachsar kolba, nothing will be lacking. Eretz Asher avaneha barzelu mehara tachsov nekosha, a land whose rocks are iron and from whose hills you can mine copper. So there are natural resources there. It doesn't say anything about, uh, about uh, oil, but uh, we'll have to bring that up uh, a different time with God. Hishamer lecha. And now that you have all these things, now that you have this blessing, now that you have this wonderful land that's going to be given to you, be careful. Lest you forget God. By failing to keep the commandments, which I am telling to you today. Again, one of the things we talked about over and over again, Moshe is going to talk about Hayom, this day, this day that I gave you the commandments. And interesting here, and this is, again, we've said this a couple of times over the last couple of days, when Moshe is saying that you have to follow God, it's not just remembering God and believing in God and having faith, it's actions, it's behavior, it's performing of the mitzvot. Judaism, as we know, is a religion, not of faith. That doesn't mean you have to be, a, uh, that doesn't mean you, that you shouldn't be of any faith, but it's ultimately you show your love for God. You show that you're in the covenant, not by thinking about God per se, but by expressing that through the performance of mitzvot, of, of doing uh, good deeds and the deeds that are commanded to us. Pen vatim tovim shafta. When you've eaten your fill and you have fine houses to live in, yirbiyun. And when you're right, you have a lot of possessions. You have lots of cattle and sheep, or you have a bank account with uh, eight figures in it. Bechesav is ahav yir and your silver and gold have increased. yir ben. Everything that you have is prospered. Everything is perfect in your life. It seems. Beware, lest you become haughty, you become arrogant, and you forget the God who freed you from Egypt, from the house of slavery, from the house of bondage. It's so easy to, because you think, I am the one who delivered this to me, and you will forget all of the wonders, all of the miracles that God provided to you. Verse 15, 
Hamotzi lechamai mitzur hachalomish, God who led you through this terrible wilderness with serpents and scorpions, a land that was parched. There's no water in it. It's a desert. It's the wilderness. And yet God brought water for you from a rock. So remember again that if you want to understand how to, um, if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to um, show God don't forget that God is the one ultimately who provides the same way God provided for you in this place where there was seemingly nothing. There was no way to satiate. There was no way to feed you. Then don't think that when you're going to have a good year with lots of crops, when you are in Israel, that it's just because of you. Don't forget God. Continuing about the desert experience, verse 16. God who fed you manna in the desert, which your ancestors had never known in order to test you. Again, the idea of the test by hardships only to benefit you in the end, right? You're supposed to learn a lesson. We said this the other day, the same thing. Why did the Jews have to go to Egypt? Why did we have to have that as our origin story? To remember. We are not so far away from being slaves. You might think you're on the top of the world, but the wheel turns and next week you may be in a terrible place. And so, right, you need to remember that God is the one who provides for you. We're not distant. And so this desert experience as well, you may be on the top. You may think everything is amazing in the land of Israel. Just remember that it is God who provided for you there and God will provide to you here. And thus you shouldn't say the following, because you're going to say to yourself, my own power and might have won this wealth for me. That's what a person is, 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 is ought to say. I am the one. I am the one who did this. And what the Torah says very over and over again here is God provides for you. God is the one who helps you. God is the one who puts you in the position. Why did you decide to buy this or sell this? Why did you decide to go into this business or that one? What? So you may, you know, you work hard and hard work is oftentimes rewarded in, in life. But don't think that there's not any mazel. Don't think that God is not somehow in the background helping, supporting you in these endeavors. And thus remember God, because God is the one who gives power for you to be successful. And that is, why is God doing that? Because that's the fulfillment of the covenant of the Brit that God swore to our ancestors that we would come into the land of Israel. And Moshe says, so again, I'm warning you, if you forget God, if you don't follow commandments, if you do the things that you're not supposed to do, then I promise you, you will very quickly be sent out of the land of Israel. God got rid of these nations who were listening, who did not have moral and just societies, and the same things are going to happen to you. As we're told in the final verse here, just like those nations, those nations are presented as nations that were idolatrous, nations that did not build just societies. And thus, if you do the same thing and you have a terrible society and it's not just and you're forgetting God and you're not taking care of the people that's necessary to, to take care of, then you will be exiled from the land as well. And we come back, this is Parshat Akev, and sort of this section began, Vahaya Akev Tishmu'un, and here it ends, Akev Lo Tishmu'un, because you didn't listen. So the opportunity is there for us to listen, or the opportunity is, is, is there for us to not listen. And ultimately, the way the Torah describes it here is our success in the land of Israel depends on whether or not we listen to God. And hopefully it's a lesson that will, it was inculcated at least for a time then, and one that we can continue to follow, to listen to God's word, and to help set up societies performing good deeds where everybody is cared for, where everybody remembers God and everything that God expects from, expects from us on this earth.